going to do? I'm going to ask the questions that everybody's asking. And it looks like we've got 100 people wanting to ask questions. So you're going to get like a minute and a half, two minutes. I'm going to let Shane speak first for about three or four minutes, and then we'll start addressing with some questions. Shane, welcome. I know there is a substantial solar company activity here in the in the area, in the district, um, as well as in Ohio as a whole. Um, there's reasons for that. Some that you've heard are, are factual and some are probably not very factual. But I'm here to listen and to take any questions that I can answer. I'll tell you now, if you get into in-depth solar questions about how the, how the company works or anything like that, I simply am not going to be able to answer that. I do not know. Okay, the first question, I'm going to chain. Everybody thinks that their property is going to be devaluated around solar arrays. And I pulled a Texas study up that says, depending on if you're 500 feet to the whole three miles out, at three miles out, there's zero devaluation. At 500 feet, there's close to 20%. So it's in an incremental value. And what they want to know is, how are they going to get compensated for devaluation? So the, the first part of that question I would answer would be to say this. Um, Hopefully we can all agree on this. You can find, regardless of what you're looking for, any opinion online that will say this about the values or that about the values. What the range is. Can we all agree on that? You can kind of find any opinion you want online. Um, that said, you know, what, is, what does it do? Um, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly what it would be. Um, I can tell you that in early discussions when I got phone calls, the legal counsel within the Ohio House was very clear and they said, you need to stay 100% out of that because that becomes an ethical issue for my office in interfering with a what, what would be considered a property dispute between a, a landowner or a land user and a neighbor. I believe a lot of people, at least I'm told, have been in touch with the developers of these, of these proposed solar farms and they are working on good neighbor agreements. Now, if those satisfy what you, what you believe the damage is, or they do not, is strictly going to be between you and the solar developer. Um, that, that, is a, that is an area they, they, they were very clear that I should not play in or be a part of. Um, so I'm not, not answering, I'm just telling you the answer I can give you that, to the best of my ability. Is it like a thousand bucks a year or what? Yeah, they close. Yeah. Okay, we don't fear, feel that a thousand dollars a year is fair compensation because some of our people are boxed in and you know three sides. So how can we address if we don't feel what what recourse do they have because they don't want to accept a thousand bucks a year? Strictly going back and negotiating with the uh, the landowner. Now let me ask this or the the developer: Is there anybody that's been offered more than a thousand? I, 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 there is or there isn't. So there's not. There's nobody addressed here. Yeah. You yeah, have. There has been. It, How much have you been offered? It doesn't matter. That's confidential. I'm gonna speak. It to doesn't me. matter to everybody else. Right, well, let me speak, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. What's your name, please? Trevor Elam. I'm on the list. Okay. Uh, sure. I know Go everybody ahead. here. I have and, yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm in the group with you, so. Dave, Trevor, Trevor. Oh, yeah. I know. Go ahead and address that. Well, and, and I think this is kind of you know this this whole session tonight. And I appreciate you coming down. But, um, the sucky part is, and that's a terrible way to say it, Shane doesn't have uh, the authority right now to do anything to stop any of this. And, and the, I mean, there's no bill in place, and that's where we're coming to you as the representative. There needs to be a bill in place. This is like the Wild West of solar panels. I mean, that for all intents and purposes, anybody that's in here that's going to be surrounded on one side, two side, three side, four side has no representation. From the county officials, no offense, township trustees, we have nobody. And I started at the bottom and I went all the way to the Senate and I went all the way to the Congress and we have nobody that has any information that can back us, that will support us, that wants to be in our corner, none. And I'm all for farmers being able to do what you want to do with your land, I get that. Sure, your family's invested in it, you know, you've, you've grown it for lifetimes, but how can it affect you know, generational wealth more, and, and I don't know if Mark, if you're here or not, I have nothing against it. 
they own, you know, they're the majority of the Yellowwood Solar Project out by us. It's 3,000 acres. They own 80% or so of the land. If it wasn't for them, that project would not be happening. And, and I don't blame them. I mean, for the amount of money that they're going to make per year, it's more than they're going to make farming. I get that. So you're addressing that you want him to support House Bill 118 in the language that is currently there so you have a voice. Well, I think whatever House Bill we can get, whatever, if it's one that's on the table right now, we need something to put a, a blockade in place for the moment. And I'm not saying it can't go back and be rewritten, it can't be addressed, it can't be amended. It can be. But right now we have nothing. We have zero, and you got David versus Goliath. That's these people that are, you know, we're all hardworking Americans too. That we live here, we represented, we, you know, we the people in this room have. I'm gonna go one more, just a little bit longer. But we've elected you. We've elected all of you that are our officials. You are elected by the people in this room. Not one single solar panel company has elected you. You have to have our back, not them. And and simply. You know, a thousand dollars a year is not going to work for people. We all know that. If you're taking a big hit in what you've worked your entire life to put together, you're affecting generational wealth for the people that are. You know, if you're losing a hundred thousand dollars, you're using ten thousand dollars. That's generational wealth that you're not going to hand down to the rest of your family, your kids, your grandkids, whatever. Now, again, I don't mind Marquis getting rich. That's that's great. I don't care who gets rich in this room. But it can't be at the expense of the other people that live in this area. And that's my biggest complaint right now. There's no one in support of the people that live in this area. So let me address that. You have House Bill 118 that's out there. And you have Senate Bill 52 that addresses uh, wind and solar. Um, are you supporting them? As they are currently written, no. No, I'm not. And I am not supporting them along with, let me turn my phone off here, sorry. Currently, as House Bill 118 is written, along with Senate Bill 52, this is not popular in this room, and I realize that. But I do not support them as written. I can tell you this, they are being redrafted right now. I talked to one of the bill sponsors earlier today. They are being redrafted. What that redraft is going to look like, I do not know. My biggest concern my biggest concern with the way they're written is setting the precedence of what comes next. Do you want a township referendum on whether or not you can use a plastic bag? Because yes, that's an issue that's came before the House. And I've got some notes here. I'm not getting on my phone. Um, do you want the option to be able to have natural gas? Because yes, that's something that's coming through the House to ban natural gas. Um, what about propane? Do you want the right to have propane? That, that is something else that is, that is being talked about. So my question is, as it's written, where does that stop? And a sincere question to everybody here is, where is the line on personal property rights? Is that stuff on this particular bill? That, that stuff is not. Well, but we don't work, we're, we're working on one of these yeah. But what I, what I have to look at as a legislator is this is going to open the ball of wax for all these things to come down the line. We already have those things. We already have gas, natural gas. We already have those. That's besides the point. Actually, no. It is something that could say, all right, if you live on this side of Lynchburg and natural gas comes through Lynchburg, Lynchburg could say, we don't want any natural gas throwing through the pipes in town. So therefore, we're shutting it off, which means it can't get to you, which is going to mean higher prices. It, I, I can promise you, and I, and I don't know as much as I want to know eventually, but energy is a very difficult, complicated deal. It is. Um, all, all I can tell you on those is, is uh, they're, they're not being written because, or there's not being sub, substitute bills being drafted over my concerns. It was multiple concerns from people in Columbus and at the House. Representatives. So are you saying let everybody's property values go down the toilet, stand on your principle, and I get what you're saying. Why can't the House bill say this pertains to these solar projects or whatever? You guys take votes all the time. If you got a vote coming up for natural gas, vote no on it if you don't agree with it. But this affects us now. This isn't something in the future, you know, just some concept. This is now. Well, 
and, and I understand that. But what I have to look at is the precedent that it sets going forward. What if you want to start raising chickens? Do you want a township referendum on that? But is there zoning, is there zoning for stuff like that? I mean, there could be, but I don't think there's, in the most, most of these townships, there's not. Okay. Um, you know, where does that line stop on personal property rights? Where do I tell whomever? Can you show us? So, so let me ask you this, a sincere question. Is there anything else a neighbor could do that would affect the value of your property? Oh, well, I'm sure there is. And, you know, there's always something to be done, but what's going to have the impact? You know, my neighbor's standing back here. What can he do that's going to have the impact that this solar project will? Well, and that I don't know. You know, uh, it's a lot easier to clean up. To is, you know, if you have some uh, a hog operation or or a poultry operation, that would probably affect your value pretty substantially. Uh, yeah, I mean, I get that, but you, you see, it's a lot easier to clean up one property. You know, somebody can uh, move in and clean up that property. When you have something like this, there's no going back. It's done. I mean, right. that's it. I understand that. Good deal. Good deal. This is House Bill 118, which is, this is not SB 52, but they're sister bills. And they are writing new language, but they haven't given us the language yet. I have not received it. They were supposed to send it to me just as soon as they got that finished. And I don't know what the language is. But I told them that this group, you 600 in this group, we don't want the language taken out to where pending projects get a pass. So that's where we're at. We're firm that we don't want, we want these projects out of here, okay? We all like that. And I'm, we're gonna to try to be orderly asking, and I know it's hard because we're looking at maybe losing a property value and, and, and being encroached on. If the language changes, are were you gonna be in support of these bills? I mean, it depends on the language. State. I mean, I can't predict the future, but right. it's, uh, I mean, it's, that's why I'm here. It's not off the, the, the table at all, but I've got to see the language. So you're not completely against not having solar panels? So I think that's a big misconception that I've been construed as either I'm all I'm not for, you are. I'm I know, I understand, but I, this is for the group, that I'm either all behind solar or um, I, early on I was, I was told I was completely opposed to solar. And I'm really... It's that I view that as more between the property owner and the developer. That's that's one of the things I, I if somebody can help me figure out where that perfect line is, I'd love to hear it. It's it's a it's a tough spot. I'm here. You're right. Here's the problem. House Bill Six. You want to talk about House Bill Six? Did you not co-sponsor House Bill Six in favor of clean energy? Uh, it was called the Clean Energy Act, but as far as House Bill Six goes, I'm glad you asked. Um, Willowbrook 1 was approved on September 17th of 18. I had been there for like four months. It was already approved. But you co-sponsored the bill. I'm talking about the projects. She, she the solar was... projects. I'm getting to that. Okay, go ahead. So the solar projects that, that are associated with um, the Highland Project, it passed in May May 16th of 19. House Bill 6 was not introduced until uh, it was April of that year, so just a month before. Um, so I'm sorry, Shane, but I think you're missing my point. No, no I'm getting to it. I promise you. But Clinton, uh, the, the Highland Project, or the I'm sorry, New Market in Highland and the Clinton Highland Project. There's there's nothing that comes from House Bill 6 to them. And frankly, if you talk to just about any solar developer, they were adamantly opposed to House Bill 6 because what we did is we froze what is called the renewable portfolio standards at the level they were at, which is a way for them to get money. We froze those renewable portfolio standards at 8.5%. They were scheduled to go to 12.5%. And, and in 2026, those mandates come completely off everyone's bill. So I don't think you'll find a lot of solar people that are crazy about the renewable portfolio standards going away. As a matter of fact, we fought to keep them out of our future electric bills. So outside of the two, the Willowbrook and the Highland, the one that's called Highland, those are the only two that get anything out of House Bill 6. So 
did I co-sponsor House Bill 6? I did. To get rid of the mandates on our electric bills, the RPS, it got reduced. The energy efficiency on your electric bill is wiped off. It's not there anymore. And, it's, and it gets, uh, it ends them in 2026. To the savings of about $2.3 billion for the state of Ohio. Um, How much do you go for every electric rate payer. Okay, here's what, here's what, right. keep the time, but that's okay, we can get by with it. Here's what we want to address. I don't care about House Bill 6. You did whatever you thought was right. I'm with you. But what they are concerned about is if my 100 acres would have been put in there and I'm getting $900 to $1,200 an acre, I had a contract and made an offer to me, and I turned it down. Okay, so it's increased my revenue. Just as if I put the four beans out, whatever. But it, in all the studies, and we can argue points, tiers of devaluation, if his house or his house is worth $200,000 and he takes a 10% hit, he lost $20,000 of value because his neighbor just made $900 an acre. So there has to be a balance because these people where they have the smallest house ever, or they have a house with four or five acres or whatever, it has value to them and they are losing value because their neighbor is allowed to gain value. So you're right, there has to be a balance in there and somebody has to come up with that balance. And they want, they want equal rights because these are the people that voted for you. We are your electors and we want you to represent our opinions and not Energex or Invenergy, I don't know where they're from, but we don't want you to represent them. They are not your elector. I, I guess, what, what is the assumption that I represent the solar people? Because you're not. Represent us. Because you're not. I, I didn't say I, I didn't represent you. I'm asking where, where is it coming from that I, I somehow am I, I'm 100% for the Jay, solar people? Can you explain to these people the process of the power siding board and what that entails so they know the process this has to go through? I can, let, let me finish this point first. Okay. What they see is you're not supporting House Bill 118, and you said because of language. Yeah, and the only way that they have a voice is if House Bill 118 gets across the line. That's a great point, other than we don't know what House Bill 118 is going to look like next. Okay. Right now we don't. I right. agree. So I, I can't answer a futuristic okay. question of whether I support what, something wait, that I've wait. never seen. What language do you need to see in House Bill 118 to pass it so they have a voice? What language does Shane Wilkin need to see written? Where's your, where's your hang-up point? That you, I don't want to hear about plastic bottles because that's just going to get them irritated. We'll make sure it gets in there. We know what you want in there. We'll make sure it gets in the middle. Tell us what you need to see because what we'll do, we've got 600 people, one on 700 people, and we'll write letters to those co-sponsors and say, Shane Wilkins said if he says this, this bill says this, he will support it. And we'll write letters for you. So yes. we'll support you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, will we write letters? Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And we'll vote, too. That's yeah. right. I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it. So, I can, I can give you the, if, if you want, the synopsis of the Power Siding Board. Um, but first, let's talk about 118. So, there's, you know, I, I don't, I have no idea what's going to be redrafted in that. I truly don't. I talked to the sponsor, he said we're trying to get it finished up. I don't know what's going to be in there. I can tell you this that the majority of the issues in, in renewable energy comes from wind. They're opposed to wind. Solar was kind of an afterthought. Um, why are we being inundated with solar? See the big metal towers, AEPs, transmission lines? Those have excess capacity. High voltage, excess capacity. So that's why you're seeing them Every all everybody I've talked to, that's why you're seeing them right around here. Is that a question or you want I to have stop? a question when you do. No, you go until you get done, then I want to address you. So that is uh that, that's probably why you're seeing the inundation of do I like seeing this much solar in a concentrated area? No. It, it's not it's not ideal. But then again, we all live in a world that is is we have private property rights and, and capitalism and 
How, where do we draw the line? And I'm, I'm here to listen and try and figure out where that is.